the laws that the government needs to crush crypto. Is it going to be enough? Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are, whatever you are. Thank you for watching my videos. My name is DaVinci Jeremy. I'm here in Istanbul, you know, 5x5, five five, right? For the uh, Istanbul Blockchain Week conference here. Uh, brought to you by uh, Tubit. Oops, Tubit right here. Uh, that's tubit.davinciej15.com. This is an exchange that you can go to with no KYC. Right, you can actually start buying crypto, selling crypto without the government knowing that you're doing so, which is a good thing. All right, so um, today we're going to be talking about a few news articles, both KYC and the laws that uh, governments need to crush Bitcoin. But actually, I'm going to show tell, show you how it's not possible for a government to crush Bitcoin, to crush crypto. It just can't happen. All right, with that said. Uh, let's get on with today's show. If you like this show, make sure you hit the like, right, and subscribe. I really appreciate it. Okay, so um, to start off, we're going to talk about 2Bit. It is the exchange that has brought me here to Istanbul, and I really appreciate them having me here and hosting um, them at, at uh, this uh, great conference. There's a lot of people here, a lot of people taking my pictures. Make sure you're following me on Instagram to see uh, what's going on here at the conference. And yeah, you can see all kinds of cool things I'm doing in Istanbul with um, with uh, Tubit. And if you sign up for Tubit, you can get up to $9,000 or more in bonuses. So check that out. Okay, with that said, let's move on to the news. We need new laws to combat crypto crimes. Like, really? <laughs> Meaning you need new laws. To crush crypto. Okay, lawmakers should be alarmed by the increasing use of digital assets like cryptocurrencies for money laundering, drug trafficking, terror financing, and other financial crime. Dum dum dum. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure, it's all about the crime, stopping the crime. No, it's about stopping you. We're using crypto. That's what it's about. Nations like Russia, Iran, and North Korea have used digital assets to evade sanctions, launder stolen funds, and fund illegal weapons. Mm. Can have that. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, you know they've been doing all that before crypto, just so you know. <laughs> North Korea actors, for example, reportedly stole more than 1.7 billion in assets in 2022 and laundering coins using sophisticated technical techniques such as chain hopping. Oh my god! The process of converting the one currency into another to hide illicit funds. Oh. <laughs> okay, okay. We want to know how laughable that is. You want to know how laughable? Let's, let's take a look at the total amount of money laundering just in um, one year. Anywhere from 800 billion to 2 trillion. That's what the United Nations estimate. So, so. <laughs> and how much did, did North Korea do? A pinsley, pinsley, 1.7 billion. <laughs> so that means uh, the bigger crimes are being committed elsewhere. Because North Korea can't do, do jack, right? I mean, do you know that the fine for money laundering that HSBC Bank got was last year was less than how much they made in money laundering. So what was that fine? Two billion dollars. That's reportedly less than what North Korea stole. <laughs> That's funny. That is hilarious. So that is the, the, the scam of this, this news article is trying to scare you or tell um, politicians, yeah, yeah, we gotta do this, we gotta stop crypto. But is this gonna stop crypto? No, why? Because, well, actually, you know what? You might be right, it is gonna stop crypto because there was a time in history that we invented the Gutenberg Press where we could create books and the government and churches, you know, they went and burnt books, they destroyed the, the press the Gutenberg Press and made sure that today we don't have books. Oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> we do have books today. So you can see there's no way for a government to stop 
the technology whose time has come, no matter what laws they put. You can slow it down, but that's never going to stop it. All right, so, you know, I'm going to be having my birthday on September 15th. Very shortly, I will be releasing some information of where my birthday party is going to be. And uh, anyone who has the party uh, attribute, they can actually collect that reward and join me on my birthday party in Singapore. Also, if you are uh, interested in playing the Medieval Empires game, the play to earn game, right? Um, I can invite you onto my land because it's an invite only. Uh, I've invited a lot of people already, so there's not a lot of slots left. But they haven't jumped in on the game, and I'm very disappointed in you guys. I'm going to kick you out if you don't start playing, right? So the other people can actually play. So come on in, play the game. If you don't play, you get go kicked out, and somebody else can play. So join in. If you if you just have the Davitar, you can join in by just heading over to Davitar, click on rewards, connect your wallet, show me you have your Davitar, and then boom, your email is all I need to learn to say, sign you up to play Medieval Emperors. Look out for my email, from my personal email, that, uh, hey, you've been signed up. Okay, crypto exchange BitGet to tighten ID requirements as regulators cite fraud concerns. Okay. It's unfortunate, right, um, that the, the big cat has to follow KYC. Every exchange, when they get to a certain size, they will have to follow KYC to avoid money laundering. Yes, because, you know, uh, exchanges do over 800 to 2 trillion. <laughs> money laundering. <laughs> Which they don't. Uh, yeah, the money laundering thing is just, just replace money laundering with tax evasion. Meaning that if you need to pay tax, you need to pay taxes. We don't want you the poor person to make a lot of money and not pay taxes. No, no, no. Not paying taxes is the reserve for the rich. <laughs> All right, let's do some uh, TA with uh, um, Bitcoin and Ethereum to end off the show. It's been pretty boring. I would have expected a big pump here uh, back up and then uh, another dump. But no, we went completely sideways for a very long time. There, is, there was an attempt to go down um, and it failed. And then, you know, uh, just as I was setting this up, there was a big pump and then it just dumped back down. And you can see that uh, it's emming out on the minute chart and probably even on the five minute chart. So this means that we're probably going to break down once again if we do an Fibonacci chart re retracement here. Allows. You can see we're probably going to retest the 38.2 or as low as the 61.8 from this move here. So. Most likely because the, the M is not going to, uh, it's not that big. It's just going to reach as a 38.2 at uh, $25,823. And then we're going to come right back into the, the, the point of control, which is around this, this $26,000 range. Heading over to Ethereum. Ethereum has rolled over a little bit. So on the daily, uh, we've broken down. We stayed below the, uh, on the four hour, below the, the ribbons. Um, just this staying away and we went sideways for a while now after this breakdown and we just can't seem to come back into the point of control which is not very good um, this means that we're good, there's a chance that Ethereum is going to continue breaking down even further uh, I, again once again I was expecting a little bit of a, a relief rally after this big dump but this candle here which means that we're going to head down all the way down here to test these lower levels of 14 uh, six, uh, 67. So uh, look out for any time the opportunity is short as this thing pumps. So um, that's that's where you would uh, what would you do for trading both Ethereum and Bitcoin? You're looking for pumps to, to uh, get into a, a short because this is not good. Can it go up? Yes, but the, the likelihood that it, that we're going to pump is, is is diminished because um, because of several um, trading patterns on the longer term chart. For example, the head and shoulders pattern that I showed you earlier on. But let's uh, let's just go with that. It's a sideways head and shoulder pattern, right? Right here, you see this is one shoulder. There's another shoulder, and this is the head. This takes us all the way down to further than uh, the 20K. But uh, um, so, yeah, you know, some people say that we should break. I would say this is the pattern right here. It's right there from here. And... And if we drag that all the way from the break, it's around below, yeah, below 20K at 18, 18, um, 18,000. So would be surprised if we, we head down there and uh, tested that area. 
for Bitcoin, um, for Ethereum, it's the same kind of deal. Let's, get, let's go to the daily chart, right? If we move this over here as the best case scenario, you can see the 12,000 just below the 61.8 is the case for uh, Ethereum trade right now that we're going to go as low as, as that. This, this, the EMA ribbons will have to catch up. This is not going to be a straight line now. It's not going to be like, okay, well, the EMA ribbons are it's going to be above that forever. It's going to be a little bit of a fight as we come breaking down, but that's a, that's the end result for uh, for Ethereum. Okay, okay, well, that's it for today. Uh, thank you for watching. I really appreciate all of you guys coming out and watching my show every single day. I plan to do another show tomorrow, and uh, but maybe not on Friday because. I do have plans to uh, fly out to another city to check out in um, Turkey. And then, yeah, I probably won't have a time to do a show. But I'll do my best. If I can do a show on Friday, I will do one. But t tomorrow for sure. So looking forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. And uh, peace.